Hey, Zach Smith. Welcome to the uh, sixth edition of Know the Player. Thank you for agreeing to the interview. Yeah. And uh, I have to admit, I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, me too. And I have a heck of a lot of things I want to ask you for. I had to, I had to make an outline. But before we get started, I just want to thank you for all the help that you've been. You, you don't, you don't know how much I appreciate it. I mean, I've never even had to ask you to do anything, and you come to the rescue. And what you're doing right now and taking over for Dana and the time that that takes and, you know, the painstaking work that it is, I can't express how much I appreciate that. I mean, I couldn't work without Dana. I mean, Dana was, you know, everything to me. I mean, I couldn't do what I, I do without him. And when he, you know, said he couldn't do it this year, I was, I was really like almost thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't either. <laughs> but you just... Came right to the rescue, and I want to thank you for that. Well, you're welcome. I want to see this league go on. I think you're an amazing individual and one of the most outstanding people I've ever met. Well, thank you. That's a pretty big introduction. <laughs> yeah, it's it's heartfelt. You, yeah, you you've been, you know, not only taken over for Dana, but you've done the PGA PDGA ratings now for what is this like the third league? Yeah, you did it third, last year, yeah, and then you did league. it in the winter league. You know. Yeah. And you've been the captain of the red team for the last two years. Yeah, three. Three? It's, really? It's my third year. Wow, I can't believe I that. became a captain the first year I started the league. Oh, okay. I can't believe that because Anthony Anthony Hopp has been gone that long. He yeah. was the captain of that team. He left, and then the first year, Cody Taplin stayed with the red team as my free agent because we said free agents then. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that was the year I think Grant and Daniel just swept everybody in the green team on. <laughs> but you you come from uh, Springfield, Ohio, yes, right, hometown, and that is just a little north of Cincinnati. Yeah, give or take an hour. I'm saying it's so, yeah. uh, it's like west of Columbus and east of Dayton. That's You're a big baseball guy. I am. Yes. Yeah. And I see that you've adopted the uh, Tampa Bay teams. I see the Rays. I see the Lightning. Eh, not as much. Okay. <laughs> Definitely a diehard Reds fan, number one. Okay, that's where I was yeah. going. So since I worked for the Rays the last couple years, I have become less of a fan of them, to be honest. It's hard to kind of go You're to work. You're seeing and, the inside baseball stuff. Well, yeah, it's just hard to go to work and be at every game almost and then come home and still be interested in what's going on. So. Yeah, and what is your association with them? Uh, so I worked with the Ted Williams Foundation. Uh, so I worked, they host, well, they have a museum in Tropicana Field, um, but I helped with all of the charity auctions and the 50-50 raffle that they run. Uh, so I kind of started with them in college and worked for them for the past four years or so and then kind of stepped backwards away from uh, an administrator role this year um, and then just kind of filling in when there's good teams in town and can make some money on commission. Um, so it was really good. It was very... It was flexible, but it was also like a lot of nights were out. So I got to do things during the day a lot of times, but then I was obviously working at every race game. Um, but then when the race were out of town, I was kind of like free to do whatever and, you know, just get paid for the full month. It was nice because I was an administrator role, so it wasn't based off commission. It was just, this is what I'm making. Um, so I was able to have some flexibility in that, um, but just kind of got burnt out. Um, it's just not what I feel called to be doing for the rest of my life. It's a great organization. Like... They've done. They've treated me really well. They welcome me back. I feel like any time, um, but just not where I want to be long term. Um, was that is that a seasonal thing? Uh, yeah. Well, yes. Uh, for a while it was, but then since the we actually do charity auctions up in Jacksonville with the Jaguars, uh, we host a foundation dinner in February. Uh, so when I was in an administrator type role, I was kind of working all year with them. But not but, now. You're, but not now, yeah. Uh, just kind of seasonal. Yeah, now just be seasonal. What brought you down here? Let me guess. College. Yes. And why did you choose St. Leo's? Yeah, so I wanted, first and foremost, to be in a warm climate. And I had vacationed some in Tampa, so I was kind of familiar with it. Uh, but most importantly, I wanted to major in sports business and work for a baseball team. So I looked at Tampa, and Atlanta was kind of in the conversation, but I was like, nah, I want to go all the way. Uh, so went to Tampa and looked at all of the colleges in the area of Tampa that had a sports business program. And it was St. Leo, Florida Southern, and Univers University of Tampa. So my mom and I flew down and in two days visited all three of them. And St. Leo was my first visit, just walked on campus and was like, 
yeah, this feels right. Like this was just everything that I could want. It was just beautiful. Uh, everybody there was so personable. Like you could tell you weren't just a number going there. Um, so I really just fell in love with St. Leo immediately. Went to University of Tampa, got the total opposite feel. Did not really like it. I know they're a great school. They have great opportunities as well. Just wasn't the fit for me. Um, and then Florida Southern was kind of in the question, uh, but they paid for me to like fly down another time in February. So I was like, I'll keep you in the question because of that, but you're not really. <laughs> so it was pretty much like, I'll call it love at first sight for St. Leo and myself. So um, tell us what this sports business program is. Yeah, so it's just a business degree that is specialized in sports. So instead of just having like um, a law class, that in, in just learning about law in your business class, it's now sports law. So it's just all the laws that apply to sports. Or um, instead of uh, marketing, it's sports marketing and media or whatever that might be. It's just kind of a centralized uh, degree that's kind of helping you get your foot in the door um, in the sports industry instead of just a regular business industry. That's interesting. Uh, could you take that and be a, an agent? Uh, yes. So that was one thing. I mean, like, I had a couple ideas. I wanted to really get into baseball analytics, um, but then I kind of found out as I did more research papers and found out I'm not really the guy that's going to sit behind the computer and just do nothing. Um, I actually met with a Rays analytical guy one time, and with one conversation, he was like, I don't think I'd ever hire you. <laughs> so it was awesome to get that. Um, but... He was like, maybe you would talk to the team because you know the baseball and analytics, but he's like, you would not be an analytical guy. And I was like, all right. So kind of changed yeah. directions from there. Now, somehow this led to some kind of uh, association with the PDGA. What, what did yeah. you do with them? So at, with sports business at St. Leo, to finish your degree, you have to spend a three-month uh, full-time internship within the sports organization. Ah. So this was, as I was... Realizing baseball analytics isn't for me, disc golf was showing up in my life. So I was like, hmm, what can I do with this? Um, and I just reached out to the PDGA. I was like, do you want an intern? <laughs> and they're like, actually, sure. Um, so I know it was uh, me that applied and one other person. Um, and I'll just say for my application, I had like a legitimate, not just my resume, it was like a portfolio of, of things. And when I got there, they showed me what the other person sent. They sent a list of the courses they've played. <laughs> so it wasn't, it was kind of easy to get the internship. Um, but then I went up there and lived in Augusta, Georgia for three months, uh, worked with the PDGA, uh, pretty much doing anything we needed to at the International Disc Golf Center. Uh, hosted a couple tournaments while we were there, did course design, um, got to really learn a lot. Did you uh, ever get to play the real Augusta Nation National? Uh, I did not play golf there, but I did go watch the Masters. So that oh, was you did, huh? I got to go watch the second half of one of the days. Yeah, yeah so I also got to help a little bit uh, with the disc golf course there. That oh, they're hosting setting the, up the disc golf course at yeah, Fort Gordon? The one that was for Pro Worlds. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I left um, in April. I finished my internship in April, and the Pro Worlds was in July, June or July. So I got to help all of that preparation, which was really cool. So you met Alicia at... St. Leo's College. Yes. So, so many things came from St. Leo's College. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, Mary Catherine just came into the world like uh, three months ago or so. So tell us, tell us about that. I mean, I know that she is a uh, military brat. Mm -hmm. She uh, was born in Okinawa. Yeah, that's right. So. Yeah, so it's been really cool to uh, go from somebody like myself who has lived in one house my entire life until I went to college um, to marrying a woman who lived in nine houses her growing up. Moving around. Yeah, so yeah. she was in Okinawa three different times. She was born in Japan, um, lived in Washington, Washington, D.C., and then uh, Florida. Washington State. Washington then? State, Washington, D.C., and then Florida okay. and Okinawa. So four different places growing up, so a lot different than mine. Um, met her freshman year, we became friends. I actually had a girlfriend at the time, and then the following year that had ended, and we started hanging out more, and uh, just kind of happened. We just being friends, like, hey, you know what? Maybe something's here. Um, so we dated for a good year or so, um, and then I proposed to her. We got married in May, and then had a baby the following April. So it's been wow. <laughs> just like gra Alicia grad. Well, I graduated. Alicia graduated. We got married, had a baby, it's just 
all happening. Uh, it's been fun to just integrate life and have. Uh, so now you're glad you didn't go to Atlanta, you didn't go to Tampa University. None of that would have happened otherwise. That's right. right. Yes. Perfect. Saint Leo, all, all day. I will. I will stand up and talk about Saint Leo all the time because it is just such a great school and it's given me so much. Let me guess something else. You didn't know anything about disc golf until you got down here uh, in Florida. Actually, no. So I went to camps called Young Life Camp. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Young Life. It's a Christian ministry. Uh, so I was a high schooler and I would go to a summer camp and they were like very resort style, uh, but they had frisbee golf. So they had targets in the ground where you were throwing actual frisbees and playing frisbee golf. So I kind of learned about how to play there and then realized, hey, there's a couple places in Springfield that have disc golf. So I like I played a couple times, but I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I was only throwing four hands with like a. I had a pro katana. I can remember I had that. Um, so I knew a little bit, and then I came down here, and it really wasn't even until my sophomore year that I got into disc golf really heavily. Okay, so you kind of learned disc golf from like a ministry, um, and now you're involved in a in a ministry that that uses disc golf as an outreach. Tell us about that, and what what's the name of it, and and yeah. what does it do? Yeah, before I get to that, uh, start with how you kind of introduced like the Young Life, where I was talking about how I played at camps. Um, that was kind of where I became a Christian. I had went to church kind of growing up, um, but I didn't really understand what it meant or what, sure, Jesus loves me, like, so what? Like, I didn't really get it all um, until I went to Young Life Camp in high school, and that was where I decided, okay, now I understand what it fully means, and I've made that commitment to live the life of showing love to everybody and accepting God's grace um, and knowing that we are sinners. So that was kind of where I made the decision. Um, but yes, now that I have been able to uh, grow in my faith and kind of learn more ac uh, across those few years, uh, I realized that I wanted to be able to share that with others. Um, and being able to do it in a sport like disc golf uh, makes it really easy because when in our culture do we actually get to just walk alongside with somebody and talk to them for a couple hours? not very often. Um, so that's why I see disc golf as such a unique opportunity to be able to have a ministry in it. Um, and the way that kind of works is with Eagles Wings Disc Golf. Um, so that was a, a ministry that I found out about while I was working at the PDGA. And I didn't really know what staff members looked like. I didn't really understand what they were actually doing. Uh, but I kind of reached out and started that application process and found out that, hey, I want to be in full-time ministry as well. Um, so Eagles Wings actually hosts mission trips. Uh, they've been to Zambia and Costa Rica to build courses for communities uh, to be able to uh, give them something different to do, to be able to build their community um, and be able to uh, have a good recreational sport for them to do. Um, and then this next year, we're actually going to Zambia, Costa Rica to uh, host a tournament and be able to continue to provide teaching and uh, outreach for those communities. And we're going to Brazil to build a new course as well. So we get to add another country in the mix. Is that going to be your first trips with them or have you already been on trips with them? I actually have not been on trip with Eagles Wings. Um, as of today, things might change, but as of today, I think I will be going to Zambia uh, to attend that one and then I would be leading the trip to Brazil. So basically, Eagle Wings uh, goes to these places, introduces disc golf, gives them, you know, discs and things and a course and, and designs a course yeah. and and, uh, and 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 ministers to them all at, all at the same yeah. time yeah so that's one of the bigger facets of the ministry uh, we also get to host a youth tournament like I got to do um, here in Tampa on June 1st we have 38 kids come out and it was actually the first ever youth only tournament in the state of Florida so that was kind of exciting for me to be able to host something uh, we had to have a chapel service uh, we, we also got to have volunteers that walked along with every group to help them teach them um, and just share life with them and, and be able to you know talk to them and, and show the character of how uh, a Christian kind of walks in, in the world that's, that's outstanding I didn't realize that Florida's never had a, a youth, yeah. a youth PDGA tournament, tournament. Yeah. wow it was the first one so I'm sure there's going to be a lot more. Yeah, I think there will be. Hopefully, that's, uh, that's hard to believe different. because leagues usually start with kids and then the adults start, you know, playing. Yeah, disc golf's a little backwards. The demographics are not youth as they get older. It's a lot of forty to sixty, and then backwards. Yeah, interesting. So. Very interesting, and a very unique opportunity. 
Um, and then there's a couple other facets. We host chapel services at all major and national events. So if you were to go to, um, let's say, an A tier or go to the world and you aren't able to go to church that week because you're playing, we host a chapel service for you. Um, so you can come to that. So those are some of the bigger facets of the ministry. Um, so I help coordinate some of those chapel services. Like I said, I hope helps the youth leagues and the youth tournaments um, and then help plan for the mission trips. And it's been really fulfilling and really exciting to mix two great passions of mine of disc golf um, and ministry. And wow. it's been really great. It's like you've lived a full life and you're what, 24 <laughs> years old? Uh, 24. I'll be, 20, See, I'll be 24 You don't even this have year. time to remember how old you are. <laughs> I'm 23 now, yes. Okay. How did you get really involved in disc golf down here? Um, uh, who did you meet? Like, who? what happened, you know, to, to make that happen? I really don't know. I took a trip to Colorado in between my freshman and sophomore year, and I took my discs, and I played in a couple different states along the way. I don't know why. And then when I came back, my friend Alexander Wimmer, he was my best friend in college, and we just started playing a lot more. And just both of us playing as much as we were, just got into it. There wasn't really any like somebody showed me this or somebody told me this or I met this person. Like, I, it just kind of happened. So how did it? How did it happen locally here that you 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 know you learned about the, the Tampa Bay Disc Sports Club and, mm -hmm. and that. Yeah, I guess like I did create a, a club at St. Leo because I was like, oh, we need to have something. Oh, that's right. They, they have a disc golf uh, yeah. course there. So they, they had, when I got there, they had um, two baskets. Oh, that's out. right. You're the one that set that up. I'm <laughs> yeah. just remembering now. So they had two or three baskets out already. And so as we started to create this club, I found out, hey, we still have the six other baskets. We just need to put them somewhere. So I was like, all right, I'll design something and put it out there. And it's not the best design ever, but it was working for us. Uh, we wanted to be able to play nine holes, and there's not tee pads or anything like that, but there's a good little flow to it. Um, we wouldn't be able to ever host a tournament. I worked on some bigger designs to try to design a full 18 that would be really good for the campus. It just didn't really work. Uh, but yeah, I was able to kind of get a nine hole course there, which is really great. And, and who did you run in there that we that we both know now. Anybody? No. How, how, how did you, how did the... How I just started playing tournaments, and I think as I started okay. playing tournaments, um, I signed up in 2015, uh, October of 2015. So my first year of playing tournaments, I just really like hit them hard. I started playing, my first ever one was over in Lake County, um, and then my friend played Coachman Classic, so then I got introduced. I think that's probably when I got into the Tampa Bay Disc Sports page. Um, and then I played Fun and Sun, and as I just continued to get into the community, I just kept showing up and meeting new people. Right. And then I lived in Brandon, so I met all of the Lamona community. Um, so I just kept showing up at a disc golf course, and eventually you're going to meet the people you need to meet. Uh -huh. <laughs> you're really into health. Mm -hmm. You're a health coach. Yeah. You have your own company now, right? What, what's the name of it? Uh, Mission for Health. Mission for Health. Tell yeah. us. Tell us about that. You have your own podcast. Yes, I do. And I, if I remember correctly, you give like a tip a day. Yes. So that's a uh, lot of tips. I know it can be pretty hard to come up with ideas, but uh, I have some good people around me as well. Uh, so I have Mission for Health is just the company and the podcast that I've created. Uh, so I host a daily podcast that is premised around a 60 second, about 60 second health tip every single day through weekdays. Uh, so. Uh, the premise is just to be able to fit into our busy lives uh, to kind of fuel your mind because we know that sure it's what you're eating it's what you're doing but it really starts up here with with your head and how you are acting and how you are thinking um, it's really the first part of your health uh, so i am trying to help people uh, either strengthen their mind or open it up to learn new things or even just take that first step of you know what maybe i'm not at the place where i want to be um, zach where could i start and, and we can have a conversation from there. That's outstanding. You do a good <laughs> job, you know, because uh, uh, you, you make me feel guilty, but I like that. You know, I mean, I, I know I do pretty good, but when I'm around you, I realize, you know, I'm, I need improvement. So. Well, I mean, I think we all need improvement. Like, I try to get better every day. That's one of the things that I say a lot. I want to be better 
than yesterday. Um, I, so I think no matter who I'm around, I always want to be improving too. But also I'm not the food police. Like I'm never going to say, oh, you should definitely never eat that. Like I would never come up to you and, and tell you you're wrong for, for living a certain way. Um, but I would ask you questions maybe. If, if you've told me, hey, I want to be healthy, I might ask you, well, why are you doing that? But I would never like be the food police on you. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, let's go back to yesteryear here. In fact, just last year. I want to take you back to the semifinals last year when your team was, what were you guys, the Rock and Red Rollers last year? Yes. Yeah, you guys were a powerhouse. Yeah. In fact, I kind of thought you were going to go all the way. But let's take. Let's go back to uh, the semifinals. We're at Coachman. You're playing Ben Hedstrom. Um, and you guys tie after, 19, uh, after 18 holes, and you go into sudden death. Uh, was that this first hole or the second hole? We, no, that was played. the second hole because it was it. it okay, it, I it, chose it hole one yeah, because you, I knew I could outdrive Ben Hedstrom. Okay, and I didn't throw a good shot. Oh, oh it my slid gosh! Out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and he didn't throw the best shot. He, Oh, I'm gonna follow you. Oh no. Oh, good okay. three, maybe. Yeah, good that three. was a good three. <laughs> yeah, I no, but we both took our threes. Yeah, you oh, did. I didn't park it, so we both took our threes. <laughs> yeah, so you took your threes and you went to uh, hole two. Now, tell us what happened there. Yeah, I threw a really, what I thought was a great shot. Oh, wow. How do I go in? Oh my god. I heard a tank. Definitely hit the basket. It actually landed on the top of the cage and then bounced off and went like 20 past. 20 past. And, and I was filming this. Yep. And I thought to myself, this match is over. And what did Ben do? Uh, put it inside mine. Give me the run, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, it's going to be so close. See if that caught an edge and rolled away. <laughs> he didn't make a better throw. <laughs> no. His went off to the left a little bit, but it was just a little closer. Yeah. So you both putted and made it, and he won yeah, on the CTP. CTP in the second hole, and they beat you. Well, no, no, you guys we won. won. We still won. Yeah, I thought that you went to the finals. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was the final determining match, but we actually still won five four. Yeah. So. uh just talk a little bit what happened in the finals. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what? That might be a good thing to block out. Uh, I actually remember um, it was really that I talked about well, this a couple times. Well, first of all, Cody had like this fantastic team last year. The, yes, the yeah. orange team. Yeah. Right. I mean, all year long it was pretty evident that they were the team to beat. Yeah. And they never needed a sub one time all year, it's which impressive. was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so I remember that day specifically because I looked at the weather multiple times, like checking to see if it's going to work. Literally 0% is what my app showed in Clearwater. Uh, my parents were going to be meeting me there. They were actually down here to move my sister into school, so they were going to come watch me and just play the round. So on our way there, I'm like, oh my gosh, it is thunderstorming. So since it was a 0% chance, I didn't bring any rain gear or anything get there and it rained and we ended up delaying it until like 6.30 or 6.45. Oh, yeah. So then from there we split up and I remember it was actually just me and Brian Johnson. We were playing against each other. We had our own twosome and we went out and started playing and everybody else had foursomes and I have no idea what I shot and I don't want to know what I shot, but <laughs> Brian beat me. So, uh, yeah. He's a tough guy yeah. to be there. And I think we, I think we lost like seven to two that night too. It wasn't even like yeah. close. The yeah. worst team was. It's they were the top to yeah. go to that bar and lose yeah. at the end. Um, let's go back to week six this year. Um, just last last week, did you guys take uh, us purple chain punishers for granted or something? I'm really not sure what happened there. <laughs> Another thing that you don't remember yeah. really well? Uh, no, we had a couple one lot one stroke matches that we lost and uh, I had like I had three people on my team come up to me before the scores were even counted and tell me like, 
that was the worst round I've ever played in my life. <laughs> okay, so that's that's probably what happened. Yeah. So there's a couple enough, a couple people that lost really close matches. A couple people just did not play good at all. And you guys had some good rounds. It was good. You persevered and kept playing, even though yeah. 0 and five, and you got that win. Lose. You got nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's week seven, and um, you're playing the black team. That's right. Tonight, and they're looking pretty good. What do you, what do you what do you expect it tonight? Uh, I think my team's practiced really hard this week. I know this is going to be a post production. You, you guys got together and played I think, some. Uh, no, I we didn't, but I know that they were kind of we okay. were talking in our chat, um, and I think we're going to win six to three tonight. Okay, good prediction. Yeah. Well, thank you for the interview. Yeah, thank you. Okay.